Hello, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you're if you're familiar with my channel. I'm Jason White, and this is Jason's Weird Reads. And today I'm going to be talking about my favorite books that I discovered because of BookTube. I've been watching BookTube for five or six years now, and I started my own channel four years ago. And so I, I've seen this video. Some people do a, a video similar to this if not the same thing, so I thought I'd do my own. Mostly because uh, a lot of the books I've read recently, especially, uh, and by recently I mean since I've started watching BookTube, is uh, it's been BookTube influenced. Um, I don't think I would have read any of the, like 90% of the books I've read in the last 10 years, 10 years, in the last five years is uh, because of BookTube. And so how about we get into this list? These are kind of scattered, not really, uh, uh, not too scattered. I I did I, I put one at the end that is recent and only because I kind of forgot to add it. There's 12 books here all together, and how about we get into it? I kind of go backwards in time. So first up, I have The Crown Tower by Michael J. Sullivan. This uh, Michael J. Sullivan is uh, is a favorite of BookTube's and and especially in the fantasy area of booktube fantasy booktube i don't know if they have like a like horror booktube or horror tube i don't know if they have like fantasy booktube that that they follow or use but michael j sullivan is well known he's mostly known for his uh, ryaria revelations this is the ryaria chronicles and i read the entirety of the ryaria chronicles this year and i really loved them and i want to get to uh, the ryaria revelations probably next year and the Crown Tower here, that's my favorite of, uh, of the whole series. It was just, it was the most funny and uh, the most fun to read. And I absolutely adored it. So I'm not going to get too much into the synopsis of these. I'm just going to tell you that I enjoyed these books, uh, <laughs> basically why I enjoyed them. Uh, the reason why I enjoyed the Crown Tower so much is because uh, the characters, honestly, uh, they're just so much fun to watch, even though they can be somewhat bad bad guys in a sense uh, They're also very lovable and funny All right next up. I have the uh, darkest hours by Mike Thorne. I uh, read this collection of short stories for uh, a Conversation I had with Mike Thorne and I was completely blown away by the stories within this uh, This collection of short stories now this book was actually released, I think, way back in 2018. I think he might have released it uh, independently, but he, uh, a publisher picked it up and uh, and was renewed last year. This is it here. It was published by Journal Stone, and it's it's a phenomenal collection of short stories. Some of these stories are so very dark. <laughs> it's uh, it's incredible. I, I, I can't say anything more about it. It just blew me away. Each and every story in this collection is just phenomenal. Uh, I really enjoy Mike Thorne. I've read, I think, everything he's put out now. Um, no, there's actually a collection of two short stories I haven't read yet, but I, I hope to get to them soon. So if, if, if you haven't checked out Mike Thorne, and give them a go and check out this cover. I mean, you should just own this book just for the cover. My God, that cover is incredible. All right, next up is The Same Deep Water As You by Chad Letsky. This uh, Chad Letsky was hyped a lot on Facebook before I ever heard anyone talk about him on BookTube, but I didn't read him uh, <laughs> from those Facebook uh, recommendations. I, I started reading them when I heard people actually talking about it instead of typing. I don't know what the difference was, but I, I just suddenly thought I better check Chad Letsky out finally, and I'm glad I did because The Same Deep Water As You is an incredible book about uh, growing up and uh, all the crazy stuff that, that you go through when growing up. Uh, it's got a lot of heavy metal and, uh, uh, you know, tight friendship circle and some tragedy. It's just uh, an incredible look into uh, American young life and, uh, you know, Canada can somewhat, because I'm from Canada, can somewhat emulate that or at least be similar to it. Um, next up, I have The Possession of Natalie Glasgow by Haley Piper. I read a lot of her books uh, in preparation to talk to her because I talked to her as well. And uh, 
I really enjoyed, this was the first one I read. Uh, I think my favorite of hers, honestly, is Queen of Teeth, but I'm gonna add The Possession of Natalie Glasgow here because I've talked extensively about Queen of Teeth, uh, probably a little bit too much. So I think it's a good idea just to go with the first one because it's a really good one too. It's a possession story and the characters are all really great, but what really struck me about this book was how unique the uh, possession story was. It's it's very different from, you don't see it coming, and uh, maybe now you're going to look for it because I kind of spoiled it, that it's very unique, and I'm sorry for that, but but it, it is a very unique type of uh, possession story, and what's more, it's uh, a lot of fun to read. Next up, I have the... Uh, we're going to a non-fiction book here, and there's a couple non-fiction books here. Booktube actually introduced me to the keto diet, and uh, I adapted it about about the same time I started watching Booktube, honestly. Uh, but I didn't do very well at it for the first three years. I, uh, I did lose like 40 pounds right away, and uh, then I kind of gained it all back because I wasn't really doing what I was supposed to until uh, 2021. Uh, in uh, January, I decided I was going to, you know, it's time to bear down and, and do it correctly. And I've lost over 60 pounds. And one of the books that helped me do that was The Obesity Code by Jason Fung, uh, Dr. Jason Fung. The thing that's cool about jo Dr. Jason Fung is he, he practices in Toronto, which is pretty close to where I live. It would be pretty cool to meet him. But in The Obesity Code, uh, I learned why I had so much trouble gaining weight. It wasn't that I wasn't uh, restricting calories or that I wasn't exercising enough. It all had to do with insulin and the foods I was eating that would spike insulin and keep it high. And when you're spiking insulin all the time, you become what's called insulin resistant. And that means your cells will no longer accept sugar from the insulin. Your, your cells will no longer absorb the sugar from that. And so your insulin instead takes it to your fat cells and stores it there. And that's the basic, the basics of uh, the obesity code. And it was really eye-opening and I, I didn't feel so bad about myself anymore. I, I thought maybe I just had a slow metabolism or something. That's what I said for years and years and years because I struggled so much to lose weight and it just, nothing, nothing worked. All the diets that my doctors would tell me to do didn't work, and uh, there's a good reason for it. I don't want to get all preachy. Uh, I'm just it, <laughs> I'm just talking from my own experiences. If you're struggling losing weight and you don't know why, I would I would suggest reading something like The Obesity Code by Jason Fung, because it is really eye-opening. And from my experiences, he's not lying. He's a doctor. Why would he lie? Um, there's a lot of interesting things as to why doctors today would tell you to eat like the DASH diet or something and, and why they're wrong. It's because the science is wrong and they're just now starting to discover this. And so you might see some changes in the future, but it's going to take a lot of work to get to those changes. All right, next up is Moon of the Crested Snow by W. Rice. I did not pronounce his first name, because I know I'll butcher, butcher it, and I, I don't feel like butchering anybody's name today. But this book takes place up in the north, a Canadian native, uh, indigenous reservation. And uh, it, it, the very interesting thing about this book is, uh, one, there's an apocalypse happening in the world. Every technology is gone, and the world is has turned to rubble in one fashion or another we're never i don't think we're ever told how or why but civilization is no more as we know it now and we get to experience that in a reservation where that's completely closed off from civilization anyway so uh so they learn that something bad has happened when um when certain like supply runs stop from the bigger cities down south and when they lose contact with uh, the rest of the world basically and of course there's going to be some interesting things that happen like uh, survivors from whatever the apocalypse is coming up and so that's the one interesting thing the second interesting thing is the inner politics within this reservation it's basically what you would think it's a small village uh, they live uh, differently than we do, but it's not all that different. They have internet, they do have TV, and it, it, like I said, it's not all that different, but it is different. And 
and just the inner politics of how they handle these uh, survivors and and what those survivors want. It, it's it's a very very good book. I highly recommend it. it. Takes place in the winter, so you might want to save it for a winter read. Uh, but I absolutely loved it, and I can't recommend it enough. Uh, next up, I have uh, another book, another nonfiction book, uh, written by an Indigenous Canadian. I believe she's Canadian. I think she has split do, uh, split citizenship between the U.S. and uh, America or Canada, and that is *A Mind Spread Out on the Ground* by Alicia Elliott. This book sort of goes through Alicia Elliott's life and her experiences being indigenous in our modern world. And it really goes into uh, certain stereotypes and uh, how subtly people are, are racist, but also just uh, what it's like being indigenous in, uh, in, in the Western world. It was... Uh, it, the one thing I really loved about this book also is how it went into deep into mental, mental illness. There's a lot of mental illness in this book, and uh, it's 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 eye-opening, but it's also familiar if you ever suffered from mental illness yourself. Next up, I have a, a book from a booktuber, and the reason why I added this one to the list, and, and maybe not other booktubers' books, is because this one was just fun. Um, it made me laugh a lot, and it just gave me really good feels while I was reading it, and it's actually a series of books, and I haven't continued them yet but I'm hoping to fix that I always say it but I never do but I will and I hope to because it keeps making favorites favorite lists of mine and I'm speaking of our Doris by Charles Heathcote our Doris is uh, I didn't always get the humor in our Doris because it's very British but I I the the humor I did get was very funny <laughs> and you know what uh, our Doris spiked in me a serious craving of watching British comedy. And I went and watched a whole bunch of different shows. And, and I I had a blast, uh, not just reading Our Doris, but, um, but watching uh, Charles Heathcote on his channel uh, as he talks about the things he talks about. And you know, let's get to the story, the actual story, though. Uh, our Doris is, it's basically about a crusty old lady uh, named Doris and her husband, uh, her suffering husband. Now, our Doris is very much a grumpy old lady, and uh, she's she's not very nice. The whole, I think, idea of the series is is Doris's transformation from being that grumpy old woman who's not very nice to people, into someone that you can appreciate. She doesn't really get there in the first book. The first book is just... It, it, the first book is presented in sort of like a set of short stories that are all connected. Uh, but there's like different circumstances within, within each story. And and like I said, they're all connected. But uh, it's just very funny. And uh, it's very interestingly written. And I recommend it, especially if you're into more slice-of-life... Um, nothing really all that dark or terrible it's just it's just fun and it's cozy it's, it's very cozy next up i have kill river by cameron robeek very different book <laughs> because this is actually my first slasher book that i ever read i i used to watch slasher movies all the time when i was when i was young when i was in my uh, teens and 20s i swear to god all i did was watch slashers um so i didn't know until booktube that slashers were, were actually a thing within the horror literature <laughs> and so reading kill river was was not only eye-opening it was a lot of fun uh it takes place in a water park a water park that's just about to open and these kids they sort of break in and that was a terrible mistake because there's someone inside the park who's gonna have some fun with them <laughs> in a terrible ways uh, like I said, it's a slasher, so uh, be prepared for some gore and nastiness if you haven't read it yet. It's a lot of fun, but I highly rec. It's pretty violent in certain parts, but I highly recommend it. Next up is one of the first books I read while watching Horror Tube, and this is Witching Hour Theater by Jonathan Jans. This is a novella by Jonathan Jans. This is my first Jonathan Jans, 
and I absolutely loved this. It takes place in a movie theater, so there's a lot of movie references to not just movies you would be familiar with because they're mainstream, but there's a lot of old uh, foreign horror movies that are mentioned, and uh, something terrible happens Well, it takes place at night. It's during a, a big horror movie marathon. It's like three movies long. It's an all-night thing. <laughs> and uh, there's, I think this is a bit of a slasher as well. So uh, it was a lot of fun. I want to reread it because now that I'm talking about it, uh, it's it's not... Uh, I don't remember too much of it. I do remember the end, though. And eesh, some nasty stuff going on in that. Next up is the second book I think I read based on BookTube horror tube uh, recommendations and that is video night by adam caesar i talked about this book a lot uh, back when i started my channel because i read it and i was absolutely blown away uh, this has a similar feel of uh, talking about old horror movies especially during the 80s uh, that is my favorite thing about this book but it also has a really interesting and fun story involved with it you can tell that adam caesar just by this book alone uh, that he's a big horror movie buff and uh, if you you can go check out his channel just type in adam caesar in the search bar on youtube there and you'll you'll get his channel he has his own channel i don't know if he's uh, updating it as much as he used to but he he always com like talks about a horror movie and then a horror book that's somewhat like it and his channel is really awesome he's very knowledgeable about horror movies and horror books so this this book here video night shows that so it's a lot of fun. And last up, this is the book I was talking about at the very beginning. I just kind of tagged on at the end because uh, I realized it kind of needs to be here. Is uh, my last, also my last nonfiction book. And that is Stillness is the Key by uh, Ryan Holiday. Now, I've mentioned uh, in a recent video that I've recently been introduced to Stoicism. Uh, I've always known of his existence, but I never really checked it out too much until I started watching Ryan Holiday's videos. And at this point, I've read three or four of his books, and I think this one is the best because it's the one I've needed to learn about the most, and that is silencing the inner voice in order to uh, create a sense of peace, especially if you're going through anything troubling in life. And one thing I like that Ryan Holiday does, and apparently this is a, a thing within these books from what I've discovered since, um, is that he gives a lot of information from public figures in life. So he talks a lot about, maybe, yeah, I think it's this one, uh, where he talks about Winston Churchill and, uh, and during World War II and what he did to still in mind Winston Churchill painted. Um, it's just examples like that. There's people all throughout from from the times of the stoics to, which is like basically at the same time that christ was alive so uh i think this started like year zero to like year 150 uh below that maybe even to like bc uh by about 100 years uh all the way to now so he uses like uh historical figures including uh common figures right now i think uh, tiger woods is in this book too because tiger woods when <laughs> tiger woods made some s serious mistakes um and he uses that uh, actually i think this isn't the first book that ryan holiday talks about tiger woods tiger woods has a lot of interesting issues and and but uh, he also overcame a lot of things as well so there's 12 books i hope i didn't miss any on my list here 12 books <laughs> that uh, booktube recommended to me and I read and I loved there's more uh, but these I, I would say are at the top of, of the list and that's, that's why I'm here talking about them today thank you for watching I hope that you had some fun if you did please leave me a stack of books deep down there in the darkness keep being safe keep being creative and I'll catch you guys in the next bookish video